Hey everybody, DM Jim here, and welcome to the final episode of this long project of recreating this Warhammer 40k ship in chipboard and odds and ends, you know, plastic bits. It's been a really fun project. Um, I had a lot of people email asking me to continue to show more of the work in less of the editing, and, and I understand that. You know, when we make these videos, uh, we edit out all the the pauses and the mistakes and sometimes when we're walking away because, you know, that takes time and we want to give you a, a fast video. But some of the videos uh, that I make, um, people have said, hey, I'd like to see a little more detail in how you got there or how you did that. So I'm not going to be doing that in every video, but for this particular series, I thought it would be interesting to show you start to finish all the steps or as many of the steps as I did or I could to show you how I took something that is a consumer or retail version of a product and recreate it um, in, in other materials. So this is the last video. It's basically going to show you the, the priming and the painting and adding some uh, landing gear and it's done. Does it look exactly like the retail version? Absolutely not. There are major differences. Does it look as good a quality as that? Not really. Uh, I mean, if you get up close to it, you'll see imperfections. You'll see the roughness of the model compared to say a, you know, a, a plastic one that's been, you know, molded with, you know, I don't know how they make them, the pieces. I knew, I know it's uh, molded, molds that they make and they inject hot plastic and so you get crisp seams and high detail but you know some of these models can be a hundred dollars to however much you can find them on ebay for so some people may not have the ability to afford those some people may not want to spend that i don't want to spend that kind of money on certain models for my game so it's always nice to know that given time and, and given you know just some tweaking and playing around you can oftentimes recreate these models so I hope you enjoyed it, and what you're going to be watching from part one to part nine, I guess this will be, is this. I hope you like it. Um, I'm really proud of it. It's uh, it's not blue like the one that you'll find on the internet mostly. It's my red version with gold armor, but I'm quite pleased with it. Um, it's uh, sitting on the desk. Uh, I, I definitely just love the way it looks. Um, especially the red and gold. But again, make one and paint it the color scheme that you enjoy the most that matches your theme. And uh, if you want two or three or four of them, just be aware that you know, you're going to spend um, you know, 10 plus hours to make one of these, maybe less if you do them uh, three at a time or whatever, and you sort of uh, you know, assembly line it. But uh, let's get to the video and let me show you how I finished this up. And I welcome your comments. I would love to know what you think of it. I would also love to know your thoughts on these longer videos where you see more work and less editing and paring down. Let's get to the tabletop and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. All right, here's the ship uh, primed in a very dark gray. Now normally this ship would be painted like a, what they call a marine blue, which is about this color and then maybe dirtied or weathered a little bit. I'm going to go the complete opposite. I'm going bright red. All right, I went and primed it, not in red. And after the priming, I hit it with a very bright coat of red spray paint. Now, yes, it is very bright, but this will be toned down over time as I add various layers. Now, right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue on a jar of... Mod Podge, and I'm going to glue it underneath here just so I can hold this and move it around, kind of like I'm painting a mini. So I'm going to let this glue dry in just a second, or cool. All right, first colors. Let's do brushed metal, and I'm going to do this on these lower pieces down here that I glued. Let's see if I can show you what I'm talking about. Um, do I have a brush? Yeah. All right. So a lot of what I'm gonna be doing here is painting, um, painting this uh, in, in individual pieces. 
then I'll dull down the, the red. So again, I don't like painting in metallics because generally they just don't do good coverage. So I'll end up having to do multiple coats on this. And what I'm going to do is at frequent times, I'm just going to time lapse. I won't give you a heads up. You'll just know when I'm time lapsing. Okay, I have tried a variety of color schemes, and the one I've come up with is the red with copper detailing. Um, again, you know, this is, I realize co color is a taste thing. Some people don't like certain colors, but I have to tell you, I do like copper on red, and I'm going to show you. 
Um, I, I did this side in yellow, then I went to orange, then I went back to yellow. <laughs> I went This side I went to sort of a dark crimson. Finally, I set it on this copper, and I just love the copper. So that's what I'm going to go with. And I am going to, um, I'm, I'm sort of putting it on here pretty thick because I want it to have that metal armor look. And I will go be going back with red to, to uh, fix little you know mistakes I've made and things like that. So not a big deal. I, I knew I was going to do that uh, at some point. So I'm not worried about little little errors of painting because I will go back with a bright red and, uh, and get some of the detail work that I, I messed up on. So right now I'm just going to uh, probably time lapse this and then paint all of the armor stuff with this copper. And by the way, this copper is called the Gold Treasure Gold. It's a brand from Plaid. It's one I really like because it just goes on good. It doesn't require a lot of coats. I mean, you can put multiple coats on, but it just covers really, really well. But you have to shake it good. I know that more that much. All right, while the paint is drying on some of these parts, I want to work on the cockpit here. I've painted the entire thing black. The reason being is I want to build a frame that is going to sort of fit over it three-dimensionally. It'll stick up. I'll paint it red and then put it on there. Um, I, I don't know what my thinking was initially. I, I had intended to do that from the start, but now I realize it might be a little tricky, but I'm going to give it a shot. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut two consistent thicknesses of um, chipboard here. I'm going to make them one eighth inch, and I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut more than one of these because I probably will need that many uh, because I'm going to be fine tuning, fine tuning this thing, and uh, I have a feeling I might make some mistakes. So if that's the case, no worries. I'm going to cut two for now. So I've just made two marks at the one eighth, and try to try to make them consistent widths. Right, there's one, and what this is going to do is I'm basically going to just hand cut these, and it may take a little while. So I think what I'll do is time-lapse this and you can just watch as I sort of develop the frame but these are going to be pieces that are glued together and just sort of they fit together like so um, first thing I want to do is I'm gonna make the cross pieces here there'll be one two three four
All right, I was going to paint the cockpit um, red, but I think it'll I think it's going to look better if I go with a metallic. So I'm going to hit it with this uh, brushed metal, which is also what I hit on the engines back here to give them that. Uh, they, these were painted all black and then dry brushed with this um, this uh, brushed dark gray, which looks just to me. It just looks awesome. I love the color of it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get me a detail brush so I don't... Well, I'll use the detail brush to get the black if I make any mistakes, but right now I just want to see what this looks like.
All right, final thing to do is to clean up the black or the silver that overflowed in the cockpit here. So All right, the last thing I need to do is put some landing gear on it just so it sort of sits on the table. I don't want to, I, I thought about mounting it to a post so it looks like it's flying, but for me, most of what I'm going to do uh, with this is use it as a piece of terrain on the table. I mean, it, depending on a scenario, it could be used as like a, you know, a get to the chopper type scenario where they have to get the, to the ship or something, but otherwise I just plan on having it sitting there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, some of my VEX components. This is from a VEX robotics kit. I have a ton of this stuff uh, in, um, in my junk drawer. And basically, it's, it's sort of like Lego, but it's, it's just a different type of way of connecting things. Here's a basic piece right here. Here's a connector, so it goes in the hole. And then I'll put this one together like so. Um, these two pieces are identical. They will go under the engines right here. And so I can put them on there. And this piece has it sort of tilting up. It's kind of hard for you to see. Let me move it over here so you can see that. So it's the ship is sort of uh, nose up. Now I could I could change that, but it actually doesn't bother me. I actually kind of like the look of it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to glue these two on there and there. So let's go ahead and put some good glue on here. All right. This one will go right there. Just eyeballing it. You could be exact if you want to. And then this one. there okay and then this one I'm trying to think how far up I want it I don't want it too far you know what now that I look at it it doesn't let me try something real quick uh, I have some very small connectors here's my here's one of the junk bins by the way with all the deck stuff in it I have some very small ones, if I can find them quickly. It's always the problem when you have a small bits, is finding the one you need and all the other bits. Come on, I know I had a small bag of them. What did you do with those? See, these are, these are called two length connectors, see the slots? And I believe I have some one slot ones, which are very little stubby things. Let me just take all these out. That'll help me find it. Uh, nope. Nope. Come on. There they are. One one slot. All right. Let me try something real quick. Put all these back in. All right. Scissors. Let me just put one of these in here and see what it does. It's not a very big point to glue to, but I'll show you how I'll solve that in a second. That's that's not too bad. That's not as bad. See, originally I was going to be gluing to this curve here, and that's not a good that's not a good way to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to take a second one, which is right. Got lots, lots of these. Let's see where is one. Here we go. All right, so here's a here's a similar piece. I'm gonna flip it over. Now you'll notice it has this this raised part right here. I can't I can't have that 
facing up because I can't glue on that edge, but I can glue on the flat edge. So what I'll do is I'll just turn it upside down, stick it in here like that. There we go. Now I have a very solid landing gear. All right, now what I can do is uh, I want the smaller one to be the one that's on the ground. So I'm going to glue. First thing I'm going to do is put some glue on here to hold that. And there we go. All right. Not the best solution for landing gear, but because it's so low to the ground, you really can hardly see the landing gear. All right. Yeah. You can kind of see the nose up just a little bit. It's okay. But uh, the landing gear is very stubby. Very, very stubby. And there we go. All done with the landing gear.